first time we are introducing it and let us study its effect. What will be the effect of adding RS1 and RS2? These are called as degenerated registers. Basically what they will do is they will reduce the differential gain at the cost of more linearity. OK, so uh, sorry, they will increase the linearity at the cost of differential gain. So basically what will happen is the differential gain without RS1 and RS2 is much higher. When you include RS1 and RS2 registers, what will happen is it will reduce the gain, but it will increase the linearity. I'll explain with this diagram over here. This is the transfer characteristics of differential pair with and without degeneration. So when RS was equal to zero, the gray color curve, we got that, right? This is the transfer characteristics. So uh, VY, VX and VY are the two, diff two outputs. VX and VY individually are single ended. But when we take VX minus VY, it becomes differential. So we have plotted VX voltage and VY voltage. As you can easily see over here that, uh, you know, here we have a differential nature over here. That means uh, when one transistor is working on and it carries most of the current, the other transistor will be normally off. And when one transistor will carrying all of the current, the other transistor will be off. But this is valid only for a you know, very high range of input. Now, what is this VID? VID is the differential input. V in 1 minus V in 2. Okay. V in 1 minus V in 2 is my VID. So, VID 1 is V in 1 minus V in 2, some value. VID 2 is uh, V in 1 minus V in 2, some other value, right? A higher value than that. And then minus VID is uh, V in 2 minus V in 1. And minus VID 2 is some other value of V in 2 minus V in 1. OK, so over here we have plotted this uh, transfer characteristics and what do we know from this transfer characteristics that the common mode point over here, the DC level over here is VDD minus RD ISS by two. This we have seen in the last time also to that common points remains the same. But what's the advantage over here that uh, if the input linear range, if the difference between the input V in one and V in two, if the difference between the input is very, very small, only then your amplifier will behave as a linear amplifier or else then uh, what will happen is as the difference between V in 1 and V in 2 increases, uh, one of the transistor will remain on while other will be off. It no longer behaves as a differential pair. OK, so our objective was to increase this linear range. OK, linear range in the sense this characteristics is almost like a straight line over here as you can see in the gray color curves, but when you add RS1 and RS2, see the black color uh, curve which we have marked over here. So when you ha when you put RS1 and RS2, what it will do is it might reduce the gain, differential gain, but the linear range has increased. Now for a higher value of input difference, difference between the input V1 and V2, at a higher value also, still your differential pair will behave linearly. That means it will work perfectly as a differential pair. As you can see over here, here in the black color curves, which is uh, with RS present, the linear range has definitely increased. That means the curve is more of a straight line or, or with a longer tail. Similarly for VX and VY. Okay, and we have already uh, studied this before graph uh, about you know, what is the maximum value of VX, which is VDD, and the minimum value is VDD minus ID into ISS. Fine. So now we will proceed ahead. So we uh, we are showing over here a degenerated differential pair with RD1 equal to RD2 is equal to RD and RS1 is equal to RS2 is equal to RS. So basically we are considering a symmetric degenerated differential pair. So this differential pair will incorporate your resistive degeneration to improve the linearity, right? Your what will happen is your RS1 and RS2 will soften the non-linear behavior of M1 and M2. OK, so basically what was happening until this part was almost like a straight line. Your M1 and M2 wasn't saturation and it was behaving linearly, meaning when we predictable output. Linear means predictable output. Whenever you, you know, when you apply some input, you know what will be the output like. So that is what you mean by linearity. So by adding RS1 and RS2, we have increased the linearity or we can say we have softened the non-linearity of M1 by uh, M1 and M2. Fine. Now let us consider one case. Let's say that V in 1 minus V in 2 is plus VID2. So somewhere around here we are. 
and whenever we are here what can we say your m2 transistor is off and your id1 current carrying through id1 is iss because we consider now m1 is on and m2 is off so whenever m1 is on and m2 is off id1 will carry entire iss current and id2 will be zero now if that happens uh, your vgs2 will almost be equal to vth right your vgs2 value if it is less than or equal to vth almost equal to vth then we say that that particular transistor is off correct vgs2 has to be greater than your threshold voltage then only it will turn on uh, so what we do is we apply the kvl over here so we get v in 1 minus VGS one. So over here, V in one, V in one minus VGS one. We apply. This is the gate to source voltage one minus ID one into RS one. Okay, and that is equated to uh, this VP point. Fine. Here we have not shown over here, but that is equated to this point over here, and which is equal to V into minus VGS two. Okay, V into Minus VGS2 because we are considering that VGS2 is just equal to approximately equal to VTH. So in the next step, what we can do is since RS1 is equal to RS2 is equal to RS, we substitute over here V1 minus VGS1 minus RS into ISS. Now ID1 is carrying the entire current ISS now. So and on the right hand side we have V2 minus VTH. So here what do we do is we club the terms of V1 and V2 together. On the left hand side, and on the right hand side, we shift this term, so we'll get V in one minus V in two is equal to VGS one minus VTH plus RS into ISS. Now, what is I one equal to ISS equal to given by half mu n C ox W by L VGS one minus VTH, assuming that lambda is zero, right? So how can we write VGS one? Uh, sorry, it will be VGS one minus VTH the whole. Whole square. The square term is missing. Sorry for that. I'll correct it out. So VGS one minus VTH will be equal to square root of twice ISS divided by mu n C ox W by L. Okay. So we replace this VGS minus VTH by this term. Okay. So now your VG V in one minus V in two expression will be equal to square root of twice ISS divided by mu n C ox W by L plus RS into ISS. So if you look carefully into this equation, that is 30.3.10, your first term on the right hand side, that is this term, is actually equal to VID2, which is V in one minus V in two only, provided your RS is equal to zero. Correct? Whenever your RS is equal to zero, you you believe that your right hand side and left hand side will be same. That means whenever RS is equal to zero, your uh, this term over here should be equal to VID2 only. Okay? So that will follow that. Your VID2 minus your VID1 should be equal to RS into ISS. That that will only suggest that the linear range now has increased or widened approximately by plus or minus RS into ISS. So this RS into ISS is increasing the linear range of my differential amplifier and hence making the you know the the non-linear behavior of M1 and M2 is. Drastically increased. I mean, it, it it has softened. It has reduced. So your differential amplifier is more linear now, with the degenerated uh, resistors RS1 and RS2. Clear about this? Any point to be clarified again? So this discussion which we had just now, it's leading to only one conclusion that your differential gain is reducing, but your linear range of a differential amplifier is increasing. Okay, but normally in the integrated circuit we no don't prefer using resistors. So we'll uh, we will see an alternative how to achieve a higher linearity uh, without using these resistors RS1 and RS2. Okay, fine. Let us move on to the next topic. Next topic is deriving the gain or uh, of a degenerated differential amplifier using half circuit concept. Now we know what is a half circuit con concept over here. Whenever we have a node P, right, that node P will act as a AC ground or virtual ground. Fine. So what do we do over here is our aim is to find V in one minus uh, sorry V out one minus V out two as a function of V in one minus V in two. Basically, we are supposed to find the differential gain, and in this analysis, we assume lambda is equal to zero. 
for both the transistors and gamma is also zero. That means we are ignoring the body effect. So what is V out given by? V out is given by V out one minus V out two, whereas actually V x minus V y only. R d two is equal to R d one is equal to R d. R s one is equal to R s two is equal to R s. And uh, the current I d one plus I d two will be equal to I s s, where I s s is the constant current source. So let's start using a uh, you know deriving the fo formula for the differential gain. So using the half circuit concept, we can write that your node P is at virtual ground. Okay, no node V P experiences no change. Therefore, node P can be considered as a AC or a virtual ground. We have proved this point before, so we can, you know, we need not have to explain it again. So, therefore, what will happen if you consider node P as a virtual ground? Your circuit can be divided into two halves. So now you can connect this uh, uh, after RS1, you can connect it to a AC ground. So now you can analyze them separately. Uh, but uh, what are the inputs? Inputs are differential. So the inputs are differential. Differential means what? They are equal in magnitude but opposite in phase. So we can write over here v in two is equal to minus of v in one. Okay. Now we assume that uh, your M one and M two transistors are exactly matched. What do you mean by exactly matched? Their G M one and G M two are equal are same. That is equal to G M. Now what will happen is your M one transistor along with R D one, R S one, and input V N one will form a common source amplifier with degeneration. Okay, will form a common source amplifier with degeneration, and we know how to write the formula for a common source amplifier with degeneration. So we can write V X due to V in one will be equal to minus R D one divided by one upon G M one plus R S one. Okay, into V. So this we have derived earlier. I mean, we have used this formula many times. The common source amplifier with source degeneration. You all can refer it. So V X due to V in one will be equal to R D one can be written as R D, R S can be written as uh, R S one can be written as R S because we have assumed over there before, and G M one is equal to G M. So V X due to V in one will be equal to minus R D divided by one upon G M plus R S into V in one. Okay, so this we have analyzed the left part of the circuit. Now it's time to analyze the right hand side. So here it is marked in orange color box. So a circle, sorry. So M two along with The resistor R D two and R S two, along with the input V in two applied to the gate terminal, will form another degenerated common source stage. So now we can write V Y due to V in two will be equal to minus R D two divided by one upon G M two plus R S two. So over here we know that R D two is equal to R D, G M two is equal to G M and uh, is equal to G M, R S two is equal to R S. So V Y due to V in two will be equal to Minus R D divided by one upon G M plus R S into V into. So now what do we want? We want V X minus V Y. So we subtract the two terms together. So what do we get? Minus of R D one upon G M plus R S into V in one. Minus of minus the same expression R D divided by one upon G M plus R S into V into. So if you uh, you know take this common minus R R D divided by one upon G M plus R S common. What do we get? V in one minus V into. And so we take that term on the left hand side. So what do we have over here? V X minus V Y divided by V in one minus V in two is nothing but V out one minus V out two divided by V in one minus V in two, and that is equal to minus R D divided by one upon G M plus R S. So this is my voltage gain of degenerated differential pair derived using half circuit concept. You see how simple it becomes to derive the expressions for the voltage gain. Using the half circuit concept, so please note down this formula. Uh, this is minus R D divided by one upon G M plus R S. So basically, what happens is your degenerated differential pair will trade the gain for linearity, and your differential gain will be less sensitive to the G M variations because even if G M varies, it's in the denominator, so its effect will not be that much. So at that point of view, the gain is also more stable. Against uh, uh, you know, against the variations such as transistor vari uh, parameter variations and other variations also. So here it is a more stable gain with a degenerated differential pair. Any doubts anyone has in this topic? Yeah. 
so let me revise what we have done so far we have started with a differential uh, degenerated differential pair and uh, that is in the form of addition of rs1 and rs2 in the source terminal of m1 and m2 right and what does uh, inclusion of rs1 and rs2 did it has increased the linear range but at the cost of the differential gain and then we found out by the small signal analysis that the voltage differential voltage gain of a uh, degenerate differential pair is given by the formula minus rd divided by 1 upon gm plus rs this is derived using half circuit concept yeah 